Hello folks, I'm Alex, this is Alex Unabridged, and this is my wrap up for April. So welcome or welcome back to the channel if that is the case. Yes, April's done. April was quite a big month full of events and so I've got quite a few uh, books to get through today. Before I start, a quick bit of business. Um, as this video goes out, um, I will be away on holiday uh, for two weeks. Uh, so I am not doing any filming and editing and all that kind of stuff for the next couple of weeks. Um, but I have prepared a few bits ahead of time. Uh, you'll get a couple of, uh, there's, a, there's a couple of um, just random fun videos coming your way. Uh, plus I've already done my June TBR, so that's ready to go. Uh, and so those will be released um, over the next couple of weeks. But we'll be down to like one video a week from me rather than the usual two. Uh, and then when I get back from holiday in a couple of weeks, we'll, normal service will resume. Uh, so there we go, that's that business out of the way. Let's dive into what I got through in April then. Uh, so yes, so there were three events. Uh, there was Trans Girl April, uh, which was uh, the brainchild of Sekevi, uh, which was about reading work by trans and non-binary authors. Uh, then we had Giant April, uh, hosted by the fabulous Roy over at Roy Reads Anything. Roy sent me this fabulous pin badge as well, if you can see that, Giant April, which will go on my rucksack now that we've finished. Um, and. Uh, then the last one was the biggie, which was uh, old school April, uh, the brainchild of Kelsey over at Slime and Slashes, uh, and with a ton of other co-hosts involved, um, a, big, a big old kind of uh, team-based readathon celebrating nostalgic reads and watches and uh, activities and all that good stuff. Um, so let's dive straight in uh, and see what I got through then for for the month of April. Um, a couple of things first, which are continuing reads, so things that I started in April but haven't finished yet. First one is Swan Song, which is the big old tome that was picked for my uh, quarterly chunk project. So this is being made over the three months, April, May and June. Um, I'm a little behind on where I should be <laughs> with it, just because of the amount of other stuff I wanted to get through for April. But I will catch up with that in May. Uh, but so far, so good. Yeah, that's really good. Um, the other one that I am still reading is uh, this one, Femina, uh, A New History of the Middle Ages Through the Women Written Out of It by Janina Ramirez. This is one of my historathon picks for quarter two, uh, for some medieval history. Yeah, I'd hope to get through this in April, but with all the other stuff that I wanted to read for the readathons, plus it's non-fiction, and I need to remember that I can't read non-fiction at the same speed as I read fiction. Uh, I, th you know, I kind of look at a page count and go, oh yeah, that'll take me this amount of time. No, when it comes to non-fiction, it doesn't. It takes me a lot longer. Um, so I'm probably just under halfway through this. It's very good but it is much a, a much slower read for me. But very good so far, but I will continue on with that one. Uh, okay, the, the only other one that is, is unfinished and will remain unfinished <laughs> uh, is this one, is um, Stranger in a Strange Land by Robert A. Heinlein, um, which was for my science fiction for the Somewhat Hesitant Project, where I'm reading some, some classic science fiction. Um, this was a DNF. I've already got a video up on the channel about why this was a DNF. Um, but basically, yeah, it just wasn't for me. It, it became, uh, you know, it, it started off well, but then it became tedious with the amount of kind of speechifying in it, political speechifying in it. Uh, so yeah, check out my little video uh, on why I DNF this if you're interested uh, in finding out a little bit more. But yeah, that one's just a no-go for me. Um, okay then, on to the stuff that I actually finished. <laughs> Um, first up, we've got My Best Friend's Exorcism by Grady Hendrix. Uh, this one I read for, uh, not only for Old School April, but for my uh, my month with 
project, my author's project, where I'm reading stuff by authors that I've only read maybe one or two things of before, and I want to read a bit more and find out if I actually really do like them or I really don't like them. I do have a full review of this uh, out in my kind of uh, Grady Hendrix wrap up for, for last month, so I won't linger on that too much. Uh, but yeah, it was good fun. I enjoyed it. It was overly long, uh, but it was good fun. It had a good plot, uh, good characters, extremely good nostalgia fest, really. Um, I enjoy a possession story um, and it was, you know, the right amount, right amount of grossness and creepiness, you know, unsettling, you know, but in a good fun way. Plenty of good cultural references and nostalgia. Um, I will pop the rating up for this one on screen, uh, but I gave it a 7 out of 10 uh, and a 3.5 stars on Storygraph. Uh, as I say, video out for that if you want to know more. Um, okay, staying with the uh, high school nostalgia fest, but moving from the 80s uh, from My Best Friend's Exorcism into the 90s. Um, with Autumn Crow High, Fresh Hell, uh, by Cameron Chaney, uh, Booktube's very own Cameron Chaney uh, from Library Macabre. Um, this one is set in a, a small Ohio town, I, th I think Ohio, Ohio and uh, centres around the high school and the students there, particularly two students, Bailey and Melody, uh, two best friends. Uh, Bailey has um, some really horrible, strange, reoccurring nightmares uh, about something horrible happening to her at school uh, and in the town. Um, and, uh, you know, she's a bit worried about these because they feel a bit more than just nightmares, but she's not sure why, until she meets a new boy at school, starting high school, senior year, on the first day of term, uh, a boy who she has only previously seen in her dream, in her nightmare. Um, and it continues from there. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's it's great. It's fantastic, this one. I really, really enjoyed this. Um, this, the, the atmosphere of this was excellent. It's set in this kind of, this strange little town, um, which is, you know, the, the Halloween capital, <laughs> essentially, of the US. So all year round, it's got kind of Halloween themed and that, that really helps with like a, a established a really good kind of atmosphere. The, um, I could picture it so well, like Cameron's descriptions and, and the way that he evokes the atmosphere. It was really easy to picture this setting and picture the layout of the town and all that kind of stuff. It was really like the detail of it in my mind my mind's eye was like really sharp and I really appreciate that. That really helps me when I'm like getting into a book. Characters were great, they were relatable, they were likeable, some which really weren't likeable. Really good balance of, you know, uh, good and not so good characters, not so good characters, not in terms of quality, in terms of, you know, personalities, <laughs> etc. Uh, good versus evil, um, if you like. Um, plot was great, twisty, turny, didn't go where I expected it to, um, yeah, really good on that score. Um, really, really good mix of like the sort of homage to uh, the sort of books, media, etc. from that era of the early 90s high school stuff. Very point horror-y, that kind of thing. Um, felt like that kind of book and I loved point horrors when I was you know, at school in the 90s. Um, also a flavour of, I think, Buffy in there, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, although not in the Vampire slayer -y type way, but more just in the high school. I think Buffy season two, something like that, that kind of feel of some of the stuff in the high school that happens. Um, yeah, definite flavour of that. And that's all good for me because Buffy is one of my favourite TV shows ever, if not my favourite TV show ever. Um, this was a, such a page turner as well. The pacing was great. Um, yeah, I just had such good fun with this. Uh, and it's the first in a series, apparently. Um, the second one is not out yet. Uh, so Cameron, if you're watching this, when are we getting it, please? Because <laughs> I want more. Um, yeah, excellent. Really, really, really good fun, this. Like, probably the most fun book I think I read in, in, uh, in April. Um, I'll pop the rating up on screen. Um, 
I gave it an 8.5 out of 10 uh, and it's a 4.5 star on Goodreads. Yeah, if you want a great 90s nostalgia fest, which is creepy, actually legitimately scary at points, really good tense uh, atmosphere, um, funny as well. Yeah, great fun. Really just all out fun read. Um, okay then, from the high of Autumn Crow High, no pun intended, um, unfortunately then we go to a low of the month. <laughs> uh, and that is with Wetlands uh, by Charlotte Roche from, I think, I think this was written in like 2008, something like that. The international bestseller. Um, yeah. I picked this one because it was, um, there was a prompt in Old School April for a book with food on the cover. And I was like, oh, that's an avocado. That's food. I can read this one. Food could not have been further from my mind whilst reading this or just after reading this. This legitimately felt me, made me feel sick in parts. It really did. This is not a horror book. <laughs> um, this is, I guess you'd call it literary fiction. I mean, the first line of the book is, as far back as I can remember, I've had hemorrhoids. Um, from there on, it is a catalogue of more and more kind of gross stuff, really. Uh, it's, it's, it follows and is told from the perspective of, of a young woman, Helen, who I think is 18, uh, who is in hospital having had an operation uh, and you may want to skip ahead a few seconds if you're particularly squeamish or if you're having lunch. Um, she is in hospital uh, because she's had to have an operation because uh, she um, lacerated the hemorrhoids that she's had for years, uh, shaving the area and it got infected. And so she's had to have a, a quite a quite a personal operation on that area. Um, which is a big deal to her because that area means a lot to her sexually, uh, should we say. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's kind of the beginning point of it. Um, but it, it's a difficult one really to talk about because it is just, there's a lot in it that is just too much really. Um, I get, I, th I think I get what it's trying to say, what it's trying to, you know, talk about and look at. Um, and in that respect, yeah, I could get on board with the sentiment of um, it's a rebellion against the ridiculous standards of beauty uh, and the pressures uh, of things like that. Um, and, you know, kind of what is seen as appropriate kind of sexual behaviour, etc. for women and girls. Um, which is something that I hate in terms of the, the, the standards that people are held to um, and what is deemed normal or acceptable, things like that. Um, I think it's the way that it's done here. All, all, of, the, all of the stuff about, all, all of the rebellion against these standards um, kind of gets lost for me because it feels like shock tactics. And I don't respond well to shock tactics with stuff like that. Um, I, I like, I, I don't mind it being hard hitting, um, but it's it it can't be done for shock. And that's what a lot of this feels like. It feels like it's shock tactics. And I just don't like shock tactics. That's a personal thing. Um, so, so yeah, I didn't like this. <laughs> in short, I really didn't like this. I read this in one sitting. Um, mainly because I knew that if I put it down, I wouldn't come back to it. I knew that if I was gonna read it, I was gonna to have to get through it in one sitting. It is very short and it is an easy read in terms of the language isn't difficult or anything like that. Uh, the content's difficult, but it's, yeah. Um, um, so yeah, I'll put the review, I'll put the rating up on screen. Um, it's kind of low across the board. I didn't think it was anything special. Um, the writing wasn't anything special, etc. Um, but the enjoyment factor for me was as low as I could go. It, I did not enjoy this at all. I, I gave this a, uh, a 3.5 out of 10, uh, and it's a 1.5 star. It wasn't terrible in terms of the way it was written, etc. but it just really wasn't for me at all.
um, and I couldn't recommend it. I have to say I wouldn't recommend it. Okay, on to something shorter and much sweeter. <laughs> uh, and that was uh, a story from this book here, The Menace of the Monster, Classic Tales of Creatures from Beyond, which I picked up for my birthday. And the story was King Kong. Um, so we're into the first of my giant April picks. Um, so yes, this was a, a short story by uh, Draycott Dell, um, which is an adaptation of the Edgar Wallace story of King Kong uh, that Dell seems to have adapted around about the same time, got secured the details of the story um, around the same time as the movie was being made in the 30s. Um, so, it, you know, it's kind of a, a, another, a an alternative novelization, if you like, in a short story form. It's only about 20 pages long and it is the story of the film. There's not much more to say than that. It was entertaining. Uh, it was well enough written. It had some good actiony bits in it. Um, it's very much of its time, you know, and I'm just, I was glad to have been able to read something of, you know, that kind of original sort of 30s King Kong stuff. Um, yeah, entertaining, um, good, fun little read. Um, I I haven't broken this down in a full on rating because it's a short story, I don't need to do that. But I, I would give this a, probably a six out of 10. It was decent, uh, three stars on Storygraph. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, um, it, it is what it is really. It's a, it's a good, fun, short, little adaptation of the King Kong, classic King Kong story. Okie dokes. Next up then, uh, was a pick, uh, my first pick for Transgirl April, um, which was Gumballs, uh, by Erin Nations. Uh, this, this is a graphic novel memoir, essentially, or kind of a combination of stuff, really, from Erin Nations, who is a trans man. Um, it's largely his kind of memoir, if you like, uh, but also contains some other of his kind of uh, comic book stuff, uh, which I think has been published in different places online and in print. Uh, but it is largely a memoir of his transition or thoughts on his transition, his experiences. Um, I loved this. Yeah, this was great. I found that I really, really enjoy graphic memoirs, uh, particularly when it comes to gender stuff. I find it a lot easier to access personally uh, than reading, you know, full text memoirs. When it comes to transgender experience, I find those quite difficult if they're in full text form. Uh, and there's something about the um, the punchiness of a of a of a graphic novel that helps me access those without getting too emotional myself because obviously I, I mean certainly with something like this I do relate to it quite a lot and that was something I liked about it it was very authentic it was very honest it was very funny um, and Erin Nation's style uh, of, of like in terms of you know art style uh, I really enjoy it's very stylized very blocky chins uh, works really well colorful humorous um and it, it is it's, it's a you know it's 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 divided up into sort of short little uh mini comics almost about different elements of transition different elements of whether it's physical transition or whether it's about the perception and relationships between co-work his uh, nations and his co-workers over time uh, family friends things like that um so yeah, I really enjoyed it. It was really valuable to me personally. Um, and just, yeah, another great graphic memoir uh, from a trans author. Um, I will pop the rating up on screen. Uh, but this one came out at an 8.5 out of 10 uh, and a 4.5 star. Yeah, I would say if, you, if you're interested in this kind of thing, definitely give this one a go. Um, Okie dokes, next up then, we're on to uh, a book that covered all of the, uh, the events <laughs> that, I, that I was doing in April, uh, and that is In the Shadow of Extinction, Part 2, uh, by Kelly Warner. Uh, Kelly Warner is a trans woman, uh, and so we covered uh, Trans Girl April for that one. Uh, we've got Giant April, because uh, this is a kaiju tale, a kaiju epic, so more giant monsters. Uh, and it also covers various prompts on the old school April list, 
uh, one of which being Neon on the cover, another one being Monsters. This picks up 15 years after the first book. The first book is very much the rise of the kaiju monsters, their appearance, the, the destruction of the world. Um, and this picks up 15 years after and starts to examine more uh, more of the stuff about, you know, how society has changed, how new societies have popped up, groups of survivors, cities of survivors, what the monsters are still doing, you know, where we're up to with all of that. Um, and as you can imagine, the world's kind of gone to shit, really. <laughs> you know, you've got a couple of safe havens, although the politics, the government of those areas is questionable. Um, you've got, uh, you know, cults essentially uh, popping up you've got slavers you've got cannibals you've got various different things uh, and you've still got the kaiju of course um i enjoyed this not as much as the first one i don't think because there's a lot of it that is about the kind of the politics the societies things like that and some of the kind of you know manipulations game playing backstabbing you know all that kind of stuff that happens um so, and I th I, that was my only criticism. Is I felt the balance was maybe a little bit off. I wanted more monsters. Uh, as you go through it, you get more monster attacks, things like that. Um, but it just, at times, the pacing felt a little bit off. I just wanted a little bit more monstery stuff to come in, maybe a little bit sooner. Um, but it was still very, it was still interesting. The world building was still really good. Um, and I def by the end of it, I definitely now want to know where we're going, you know, next with it in part three. Uh, so still really enjoyable read, um, some solid writing, straightforward, accessible writing, good action stuff, and an interesting world building. Um, as I say, even though maybe the pacing was off a little bit for me at times, it was still interesting. I still like um, the vision that Warner's come up with for how the world might work, you know, and what sort of things might be happening in this kind of post-apocalyptic scenario. Um, I'll pop the, re uh, the rating up on screen. Uh, but I gave this a 7.5 overall, that's out of 10, uh, and a 3.5 stars on Storygraph. Still really enjoyable, and I will definitely finish off the trilogy. Okay, next up then, uh, the, the third and final book that I read for Trans Girl April, uh, and this was Freshwater by Akweki Emeze, who is a non-binary author. Um, this was an audiobook. Um, I've read one Amese before last year, which was Pet, which is a young adult kind of fantasy magic realism kind of novel, um, which I absolutely adored. Um, and so was looking forward to getting back into some more of Amese's writing. Um, Freshwater is very, very different to Pet. Um, it's an adult novel to start with, but it's very different in terms of it's, it's kind of... It's kind of all over the place, not necessarily in a bad way, but it's quite difficult to follow in parts. It's almost dreamlike in some respects. Um, it follows um, a, a main character called Ada, um, who we, we meet as a child and follow. It's kind of the story of her growing up, essentially. Um, and moving to America to go to university and the relationships that she has over there. Um, some, some of which are abusive, you know, or, or, you know, just generally not, a lot of the relationships she has aren't great. Um, but she is, I don't know what the word is really, inhabited, maybe, uh, by these spirits in her mind. She has almost one foot in another world. Um, this spirit's called a banjo, I think I've got that right. Um, and they kind of possess, inhabit her, control elements of her, uh, kind of take over her consciousness at times. And you get the story is told chapter by chapter, you know, you get different perspectives. So you might get a Daz uh, perspective and you might get one of the Abanjo's perspective. And it's, it's quite strange in the way that it's told. It, it kind of jumps around a bit. Um, so it's 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 quite dreamlike. It's quite discombobulating at times. Um, I found just basically to stop trying to follow stuff and just let it wash over me, which is very easily done because a quick AMS's writing is beautiful. Their prose style is stunning. It's it's very lyrical, um, 
it's it's like it's like nothing I've read before, um, but it's it's really beautiful. It's really affecting. It's melancholy. It's unsettling at times. It's funny. It can be quite brash. The voice or the voices that Amezi writes in this are all very very interesting. It's kind of character study, um, and it's very much kind of exploring themes of of. Um, could be split personality but for me it's more kind of different facets of identity um, and how they can kind of control us and also looking at different sort of gender presentation or gender identity there's some of that in there as well um, this kind of like all just all the different elements that go into a mind really um, and how experiences as you grow up and as you go through life can affect that mind um, in positive and negative ways um yeah it's a really interesting one i don't think i got it all by any means i think there's a lot that i missed in it um and i think it's one that i'll need to go back to and re-listen to to actually get more out of but it was a very very uh affecting me just in terms of the poetry of the language it had quite an emotional um effect on me even though i don't necessarily as i say i don't necessarily think i got it all <laughs> It's there was it, the poetry of it, the actual rhythm of the language and the, the 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 language choices, things like that, were very evocative. Um, so yeah, really good, really interesting listen. Um, I'll pop the rating for this up on screen. But overall, uh, it came out as an eight out of ten and a four star read. Um, I'll definitely return to more of a message writing because their style. I say their prose style uh, is, I think, quite unique um, and it's really beautiful. It really is. Um, so from that one, then we go to something completely different <laughs> um, and back into the old school April nostalgia fests. Uh, and that is with Nelfs by Sydney Williams. Um, Kelsey from Slime and Slashes. Uh, recommended this one ages ago, I think last year actually, uh, for Old School April, and I immediately put it on my list because I like the sound of it, and finally got round to reading it this year. Uh, yeah, this is great. This is such good fun. Um, this is about a little girl called Heaven um, and her mum, Gabrielle, um, in the 90s. Uh, Heaven is uh, four, four and a half, something like that. Uh, and she loves these characters, the Nelts, who she's, she's kind of a bit obsessed with in cartoons and stuff. She's got toys of them, all that kind of stuff. And they're kind of little green, elfy like characters. Um, but then she has kind of dreams, visions, etc. That kind of thing. Dreams of the Nelts, where they are very much not the nice little cartoon characters. They are mean, they are cruel, they are threatening, um, you know, physical violence against Heaven and her mum and her mum's friends. Uh, and yeah, things start to uh, get weird. Um, <laughs> so it's, 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 it is a great nostalgia fest for the 90s. Um, and it went places in terms of plot wise that I didn't expect it to when I picked it up. Um, it, it was not the story I expected. Not that that was a negative at all. It's quite bonkers in places. Um, and yeah, I just really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed the atmosphere created. Decent character work, decent writing. Um, just fun, just all out fun again. Another really good fun read. Uh, would absolutely recommend it uh, as a nostalgia fest, fun horror silliness read. Uh, I will pop this, uh, I will pop the rating up on screen. Uh, but this one came out at a 7.5 out of 10 uh, and a four star. I'm going to give this one a four star read. Um, Okie dokes. Next up uh, is How to Sell a Haunted House by Grady Hendrix. The second of the Grady Hendrix books that I read uh, this month. Um, again, there's a full review uh, breakdown, etc. in the video that I've already got out that I'll link to in the description. Uh, so I won't linger long on this one here. Uh, especially because I really didn't like this. <laughs> I had a lot of the same problems with this as I did with Horror Store, which I really didn't like of, of Hendrix's. I didn't find the characters believable, nor did I like the characters at all. Um, 
didn't really have much of an atmosphere for me. Uh, didn't like the plot particularly, um, even though it contains, you know, kind of horror elements to it that I usually would like, as in haunted house, creepy puppets type stuff. Um, yeah, it just wasn't for me. Absolutely just wasn't for me. Um, I will pop the review rating up on screen, but I ended up giving this one a, a 4 out of 10 overall, uh, and it, it's a 2 star on Storygraph. So yeah, just absolutely not for me. More information on why in my video, as I say. Uh, okay then, uh, two left and then we're done. Um, the next one was uh, another one from my science fiction project, uh, and this one was The Drowned World by J.G. Ballard. Um, this this is set in a, a submerged tropical London. <laughs> um, solar radiation has, has gone through the roof um, and has mo melted the, the polar ice caps and the world is essentially flooded and temperatures are rising ridiculously fast. Um, anywhere near the equator is virtually uninhabitable and even places like London are submerged and have become tropical and are being taken over by um, iguanas and things like that, tropical insects, possibly dinosaur-like creatures. The, the, the fauna and the flora, to be fair, of, of the area is kind of regressing evolution in terms of evolution, de-evolution, back to something that's more akin to what you found in the Triassic. Um, and this follows a scientist, Dr. Robert Kerens, who is a researcher in London, kind of studying the new flora and fauna. Um, but he also remains behind after the rest of his team pulls out because he feels this strange draw to this new uh, new but also ancient environment and how it's affecting his psychology and he has strange dreams. He's one of several people who has these strange dreams. Um, yeah, it's quite a strange book. I really liked it in the most part. Uh, I've got a review up for this on the channel already if you want to know more about it. Uh, it's major strong point was um, Ballard's prose style and particularly how he looks at, uh, well, how he describes and builds the environment. That was really effective. I loved that. Um, and also how he talks about how the environment affects the human characters, the psychology of the human characters. Um, mostly a really good read, but there are some elements to it that did you know, spoil my enjoyment of it, and that's to do with the, some of the problematic writing. Uh, certainly problematic description, uh, depictions rather, representations uh, of kind of a whole group of characters really. Um, when it comes to race, there's some, you know, some stuff in there which is not good. So that, yeah, that's, you know, that was my major issue with it. Um, I gave this, I'll put the rating up on screen, um, I gave this a 7.5 out of 10 uh, and a 3.5 to 4 stars on Storygraph. Uh, generally a, a good book, still a, I think a good book and certainly some of the prose is great uh, with that caveat uh, to do with the problematic stuff. Okay, and the final one, <laughs> we're nearly at the end, uh, the final one uh, that I, uh, I read in April uh, was Chucky by John Wyndham. Um, this was uh, my pick for uh, an old school April prompt, which was to spin a, a spin a wheel, an alphabet wheel, and read something where the author's name uh, started with the letter that spat out, got spat out on the wheel. Uh, so I spun a wheel, got J out, and so I picked John Wyndham. Um, and I went for Chucky because it was the shortest, <laughs> mainly. Uh, I had it as an audiobook via the uh, Audible Plus catalogue. Um, so yeah, I really liked this one. I'd read Day of the Triffids uh, in March um, when I was doing this TBR. So that's one reason why I immediately went for more Wyndham because I loved Day of the Triffids. Um, this one is very different, very, very different. Um, shorter and just very different tone. Um, but I really liked it nonetheless. It's, it's, it was still a great read. It was almost a one sitting read. Um, it was only about five hours long uh, on audiobook. Um, but yeah, this, this follows um, a boy called Matthew uh, and his family. It's kind of told mostly from his dad's perspective. Um, and 
yeah, he's he he starts talking to someone who isn't there, um, an imaginary friend, perhaps. <laughs> um, and uh, as this kind of progresses and, and gets worse and sort of some of the questions that he asks are very strange. Uh, he asks his dad uh, that apparently Chucky has asked, um, you know, his dad, his mum and dad want to kind of find help for him and strange things happen uh, which bring Matthew to the attention of the press, things like that, to, uh, to, to psychologists, for instance, things like that. Um, and yeah, Chucky is interesting, <laughs> as into what Chucky might be. Um, so yeah, I, as I say, I really enjoyed this one. It's got some really interesting ideas in it. It's, um, you know, it, it asks quite a lot of questions as you'd expect with a lot of science fiction. But yeah, there's a lot, there's a lot of stuff in there, a lot of interesting questions that are raised through this character of Chucky. Um, it's just got, a, it's just charming. It's just really charming. The, the writing style is very accessible. Um, it's a really nice little family tale um it's funny it's definitely funny the kids are written well um and it, it still feels relevant it's it does feel you know kind of very british of the time of like what 1968 seven eight something like that when it was written but it also feels like it still has relevance definitely um and it was very well narrated actually by damien lynch yeah really enjoyed this um definitely cements John Wyndham as somebody that I really want to explore more of. I really like his voice, his style, uh, very, very endearing, very accessible. Uh, and I, I like his humour as well. It's often quite uh, sarcastic or, you know, deadpan or snarky. Uh, there's some there's some really lovely humour in there as well. Uh, and some really um, human characters, definitely. Um, so, yeah. Uh, I gave this one, I'll put the rating up on the screen, uh, but I gave this one an 8.5 out of 10 overall, uh, and that was a four star read. Um, so yeah, uh, another great John Wyndham. As I say, I will be reading more of his stuff as, as the year goes on, because most of it is on the Audible Plus catalogue as audiobook, which is great. So that is everything. <laughs> um, yeah, I didn't manage to get any mu or much of the like the watchathon uh, side of old school April Dunn. Um, I, I watched I think one film, which was Indiana Jones. Um, didn't get a chance to do any of the the activities either, which was a little bit disappointing. But yes, life life gets in the way sometimes, so, and I can't do everything. I've got to remember that I can't do everything as much as I might like to. Okay, last thing to do is to tell you what the book of the month is this uh, for April. Uh, that I am going to give to Autumn Crow High Fresh Hell by Cameron Chaney. Um, just for pure fun factor, as I say, this was such a page turner. Um, I just, it took me back to my childhood. It took me back to uh, reading Point Horror. It made me laugh. It gave me the creeps. It went in directions I didn't expect it to. So there was some nice twists in there. Um, yeah, it, it it was great. It was really great fun. Uh, and that is exactly what I wanted uh, from it and from April. So book of the month is Autumn Crow High Fresh Hell. Uh, but there I will leave it uh, today because uh, I probably this will probably be quite a long video um, after I've been through all of these. Um, so uh, thank you very much for watching, folks, um, as always. Uh, do drop your thoughts in the comments below. Uh, do let me know if you've read any of the stuff on this list and what you thought, uh, or what your favourite picks for your old school April or Giant April or Trans Girl April reading was. I'll be back on Sunday with one of my little fun videos while I'm away, which will be uh, the best book, the best novels I've ever read according to Goodreads. Uh, so one of those for you on Sunday coming up. Uh, so I do hope you will join me for that then, uh, but from me, for now, that's Tara. <laughs>